Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Klein. I'm the director of P20 initiatives at Northern Illinois University. And today we've got another episode of Career Pathways Virtual Trailheads. Unfortunately, this one is just me. Uh, my co-host, Ada Jamoke, is uh, busy with other things today, but we're excited to have our guest with you. We're going to, as we've been, we've been really hitting on this season of Career Pathways Virtual Trailheads, We've got another career to bring you today. So Audrey, you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Audrey Romito, and I am the um, Domestic Violence Program Coordinator for the Domestic Violence Program at Schwab Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, Schwab Rehabilitation Hospital is part of the Mount Sinai um, Health System here in Chicago. Uh, we're located on the west side um, of the medical district. And we serve a population of Garfield Park, um, Little Village, Pilsen, um, pretty much all the Western um, towns and neighborhoods over here. Um, we are part of a three hospital um, system. So it's Schwab Rehabilitation Hospital, Mount Sinai Hospital, and also our um, South Campus, which is Holy Cross Hospital. Um, I've been here at the hospital for about two and a half years in my position. Um, prior to that was actually kind of a funny story because <laughs> how I started where I'm at now is, um, or my whole career in being a victim advocate um, started when I was out of high school. I went to hair school, cosmetology school, and um, it kind of, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I worked in a hair salon and I liked it. Um, did I know that I liked doing hair and being a cosmetologist? A cosmetologist, no, but um, I decided to venture in that and actually it was a really great experience because the school that I went to for hair school was offering free night classes to get your associate's degree um, at the same time. So I took advantage of that um, and thankfully my father made me take advantage of that <laughs> and uh, we I got my cosmetology license when I was 18 and then my associate's degree when I was 20, or 19, I think 19. Um, and I moved back from, I was over by Illinois State in normal Illinois. And when I moved back home to the rural area, um, I was looking for something a little bit more full time. Um, I did like doing cosmetology. Um, I just wanted something with a really steady, um, you know, income um, and something that I really enjoyed doing. And I got a job working at the King County State's Attorney's Office. Um, I applied for just a general secretary's position and they um, had an opening in their uh, domestic violence department. And they asked me if I would like to do that. And so that started my whole <laughs> career now. Um, so when I was 19, I started working there and I worked there for probably, I think seven years. Um, did a lot of really good work there and a lot of information, a lot of eye-opening um, scenarios and things that I saw um, that really made me enjoy what I did being a victim advocate. Um, and then after that, I decided to, you know, when you're young and you want to move out of your parents' house, I wanted to move to the city. So I um, found a job, a position open at the attorney general's office. Um, and after uh, some struggles trying to get hired, um, you know, it's hard to get a government job. <laughs> um, I was able to, um, become a claims analyst for the Crime Victims Compensation Program through the Attorney General's Office. And I did that. Um, I specialized on domestic violence and sexual assault uh, claims. I did that for three years. And while I was working at the Attorney General's Office, I did a lot of work with our sexual assault department and our SANE nursing, which is a sexual assault nursing education. Um, and I got really interested in helping victims that were in the hospital and going through sexual assault kits and um, evidence collection and things like that. And so I started looking into positions that were um, internal in hospitals. Um, and that's how I became across the position that I have now. Um, I interviewed for the program coordinator position um, for our hospital at Mount, um, Schwab Rehabilitation. Um, and it's been a really great experience and very, very much so um, something that, you know, from starting from cosmetology school to where I am now, it's a really wonderful and fulfilling position. So, um, yeah, that's how I got here. <laughs> 
So I've got all kinds of questions, yes. um, but let's start with this one before I get into some of the, the unplanned questions that I think students watching this will have as well. Yeah. Um, first of all, what does a typical day in your job or a typical week in your job look like? Um, so I think if you ask anybody that's in a position that's like mine is where it's extremely unpredictable. Um, now we do have, you know, things that we like to do on a regular basis. So I do have um, in person and telephone counseling with my clients that I work with that are on the program. Those are very, uh, we, we want to make sure that we provide direct services to all of our patients and our clients um, on a regular basis. So that, that's going to be very uh, strict during our week as we have our, our meetings set up um, according to our schedules and our client schedules. Uh, we have group counseling sessions that we do. Uh, I do those every Wednesday. Um, those are in person and um, we have them here at our hospital at Schwab, but also as Holy Cross as well. Um, I have a lot of community meetings. Uh, we're huge in our community because um, the program that I run, that I'm um, working with now is we are open to any single person who discloses domestic violence or sexual assault in um, any of our settings or anybody that's from the community that comes into our program as a walk-in. Um, the unique, really the unique factor about our program and um, something that really sticks out is that because of our setting at the Rehabilitation Hospital, I work primarily with victims that are disabled um, due to domestic violence or they've experienced it or abuse and neglect um, from their caregiver or somebody of authority. Um, with that being said, when you talk to agencies and talk to community members, a lot of people don't um, have a lot of education in that in that field. Um, so we are a uh, one of the few agencies to talk to and refer to for people who are disabled that are going through domestic violence. Um, also, are one of the only hospital-based in-house domestic violence programs in the city. So um, a lot of our outreach is community work, um, making sure that you know the police departments know they can refer to us, other agencies that we work with have someone to refer to for uh, people with disabilities as well as um, able-bodied too. Um, we do a lot of client referrals, so we get referrals from inside the um, health system that we're going to their rooms to talk to the patients. Um, we get them from outside the health system, like I said, you know, community agencies will refer people or people will just walk in if they heard about our program. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, a, we have a 24 hour hotline. So um, I do a lot of, um, you know, answering the phone calls and seeing if there's emergency uh, situations that we need to take care of, emergency shelter situations, um, emergency clothing, emergency, um, you know, food, things like that um, for anyone who needs to call us. There is the, um, the Chicago Domestic Violence Hotline, and if anybody discloses mm -hmm. anything about disability or um, abuse and neglect of an elderly, then they usually will contact us right away and send them to our hotline. So our day-to-day -day is kind of up in the air a little bit. Um, like I said, we do have some things that we really are structured on, like our counseling sessions and our in-person and telephone um, uh, you know, contact with our clients. Um, but other than that, I mean, sometimes I could just be you know, sitting here working on paperwork and I get four referrals from across the street at the emergency mm -hmm. room or um, I'll have someone come in that has questions about something um, mm -hmm. or call of someone who just needs some more information or somebody who has a question about, you know, if a scenario that they're going through. Um, we also do the 40 hour domestic violence training um, through the uh, Illinois Coalition Against Domestic Violence. There is a portion of the 40 hour training that is for unique victims. And we are placed under that pro or under that portion, so we do a presentation at quite a few different agencies uh, for their new advocate. And so that's becoming more on a regular virtual basis than mm -hmm. um, kind of than it was before. Um, but so that's been taking up some of our day to day work too. So uh, I said I had a lot of questions. I think I have even more questions now. So first of all, let's start with a, a really important one. You. In answering that first question, you use the word enjoy a lot. And here we are, we're talking about domestic violence, sexual abuse. Um, these are, are topics that I personally don't associate the word enjoy with. And yet I want 
anybody who is engaged in that work on a daily basis to really love their job and be able to be whole doing it. I mean, the the school principal part of me um, has dealt with you know, all kinds of very, very serious um, situations with families and with counselors and and that's a regular part of, of the work of teachers and certainly school administrators, unfortunately, at this point. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, um, about uh, your uh, kind of own personal well-being approach to your work, um, because I would imagine that's a really important part of being successful in, in your line of work or really uh, for for most people working in different roles in hospitals, whether they're dealing with um, any any part of the wellness spectrum. So can you talk to us about that? Yeah, for sure. So I do think that like, well, after I've been doing this in this field for about 15 years, and I know that it, it, it can't, it's not for everybody. Um, it, there is some burnout and there is some turnaround. Um, but whenever I talk to uh, new advocates or you know, people that I that don't know much about the program and we talk about like how to um, work with people who are going through these crises and this trauma is, and I learned this a long time ago, is that you have to meet the person where they're at. It's always been that for me. If um, I go into an emergency room and the victim uh, is telling me that, you know, they want to go home and they want to go back to their abuser, you know, okay, that's fine, but I'm going to educate you on what to do when you do go home and maybe something does happen, you can always contact me. Here's emergency room, safety planning, things like that is what, um, you know, we go and what we're looking for is to make the transition, you know, safe as possible for our clients. Um, I do think that another big, huge goal of our program and how I make sure that this is something that I love every single day is that mm -hmm. a lot of times people's independence is taken away from them. Um, and what my goal is, and this is why I know that our program strives, is because we have little victories all day long of little things that maybe someone might think is very minuscule and not important, but to me it's huge. Um, little things in terms of, you know, some of my victims that are disabled opening the door by themselves or being able to put a pizza in the oven for themselves or making phone calls of, you um, job interviews or looking for apartments online, just little victories that we have that really do help make everything that we work so hard for, you know, excel in our career. It makes me want to do this for a very long time. So, um, I mean, first of all, I, I don't even know what words to use to compliment mm -hmm. and thank you for the work you're doing you're um, because it's, it's such important work. And, mm -hmm. um, and really what you've just hit on is the heart of everything in the human and public services career pathway. I mean, those of us, and, and that's my own career background also, right, is in that human and public services right. pathway. Our, our goals are around helping other people. Um, we've had success when other people can have success, become more independent, do things that maybe they didn't think they were able to do. Right. And, um, and when we can step back into the background and smile and, and mm -hmm. watch that, that's, that's a success for us. For sure. Yeah. What, um, so, so I really appreciate how you captured that. What would you say is the part of your job that would be most surprising to others who who don't do it? That they, someone like me, who who knows a little but may not know as much as I think I know. What would I not know about your job? That's an important part of it, a big part of it, whatever. I mean, I think that what what kind of you know, shook me to the core when I first started and I, w I was just blind to the whole situation and the whole realm of domestic violence is that it does happen in it, around you. It is in your neighborhoods. It is in, it, unfortunately, possibly in your family situations. It It is here. Um, I remember the one of the first cases I had at the state's attorney's office, they, I read the police report and the address was like four houses down from the house that I grew up with my parents. And I was like, no way. There's absolutely no way. And it just, it, it shocked me because in, you know, domestic violence, sexual assault, it can be very hidden. Um, and I think that once you start working in it, then you start, it opens your eyes to how intense in the realm of who's the abuser, where where this can happen at, um, how things are hidden, how, um, you know, patients and, and our, our clients, you know, get out of those situations. So I think that that's very eye-opening to someone who doesn't know much about 
this type of work. Also, so well, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. You go ahead. So it can be, um, you know, when you're walking into an emergency room or someone who's going through a trauma, you know, mm -hmm. first time that you do that, it's it's not something you're going to forget. I I never ever will forget my first victim at the state's attorney's office. Never forget her injuries. I'll never. That's something that's always going to be in the back of my head. But um, it also makes you. Um, I think furthers your career and your independence and your um, your strength to be able to go see those things because when you go um, and meet with that person for the first time, you're, you're, how you react to them and how you give your your services and your support is something they're never going to forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, so tell us about you. I really appreciate at the beginning how open you were about your kind of career pathway background and your education, your post high school educational yeah. experiences. Um, and tell us about if if you were involved in hiring today. Today, what does someone who typically goes into this field, what does their post high school education or training look like to gain entry into the field? Yeah, so um, I mean, I think in this field, we, we do need a lot of um, more so real life experiences is super helpful for us. Um, we do, I know that the position that I have now, we did need our bachelor's degree um, and, and some experience, but the, in my position is a little bit, um, you know, if you come in as an entry advocate, we're looking for the 40 hour domestic violence training. Um, and that can be um, done, um, like I told, like I said before, several times a year is what we, what we need to have that for. Um, it actually is pretty cool because one of the uh, staff that we hired was a student at one of the 40 hour trainings that I did, um, I think last year, and we, we were able to hire her as another coordinator for our program. So um, we really look for that training um, because of our um, funding for these for domestic violence programs. Um, we are a non for profit, so we do have some funders, um, federal and state, and then also anthro, or, I'm sorry, um, different outside agencies that fund us, and they do require the 40 hour training for most of our funding. So that's one that, that's a big thing that we will look for. Um, and then also, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying, I think that in this field, it really just depends on if you, um, you need someone who, who's gonna be able to um, really be able to stand their own um and be able to be able to see to go through these situations and um you know handle some tough scenarios that you have to go through and see so let's come back to that in in one second because i want to i want to talk about what skills people need but before i do that so you're saying you don't necessarily need a, a bachelor's degree for example to get started in this field right absolutely not no i didn't okay. get to have mine until further in my career I had my associate's degree. Okay, that's that's great. So that's really helpful. So then let's go to right where you were just going. What would you say are the skills that are most important for someone to have to be successful? Um, I think a lot of active listening is a super strong skill. Um, and I've learned that some of the hard ways uh, throughout my career. Um, a lot of times, um, just as an example, some of our victims that are stroke victims um, or traumatic brain injuries, they will have some speech impediments. And I sometimes would find myself when I first started trying to finish their sentences. And, you know, that just another thing of taking away their independence is they're trying to tell me their story. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, I know what you're saying. But it's really you have to be able to give them that time that they need. Um, also, I think having realistic outcomes is a really good, um, you know, something that somebody I need to have somebody who's being who is realistic about things. Um, a lot of times you get people who when you talk about domestic violence, so why didn't they leave? Um, that's you know something that everyone always hears is, oh, they should leave. They need to leave. Um, but you know, in real last real life, um, we have, there's a lot of uh, factors that go into leaving someone who is in an abusive relationship. Um, so somebody who's being who could be realistic um, and also I think just to be respectful of people's situations. I, I, I'm i non-judgmental. You could throw anybody at me and I would have no judgment towards anybody uh, because I don't know their life and it's not mine. So um, I think those are really good characteristics of somebody who would be, who would like this position as well as really thrive in it. That's really, really helpful. So thanks for putting those out. Now, 
Um, obviously, I know I hope that there will need to be no jobs in this field in the near future because I hope we can create a society and environment in which this stuff stops. But uh, being realistic at the moment, uh, what does um, what do the job prospects look like for someone who might be watching this and going, oh, wait, this is interesting to me. This is a place that maybe I could help. Um, is this a field in which there's pretty regularly jobs in, in Chicagoland and Illinois, or what do you know about that? I would say 100%. I mean, we um, there's a lot of domestic violence agencies throughout the state. Um, when I was at the Attorney General's office, I was a, uh, worked under the grants department as well, and my job was to go to different um, agencies to make sure that their grant funding was correct. And mm -hmm. just, I mean, there was four of us that covered the state and we all had like 50 or 60 agencies. So there is jobs out there for victim advocates. And if it's if it's not starting as a position, there's a lot of volunteer positions that are available. Um, I did volunteer for a long time when I first got my, um, my 40 hour um, out in Aurora, we did um, the hospital volunteering. So in the middle of the night, we get a phone call of if there was a trauma that came to the hospital, we would go there as a volunteer. Uh, we mm -hmm. volunteered a volunteer program through our hospital as well. Um, so I think that if it's not 100% a full-time position right away, um, there is a lot of volunteer options that can bring you to that to that point of, um, you know, full career position. Um, as I'm as I'm listening to you say that last part with the volunteers, mm -hmm. um, I guess one of the things I'm wondering is is and so I'm going to probably ask a question here in the form of a statement, but we're probably looking for as diverse a pool of people to do this work mm -hmm. as possible, I would guess, right? I mean, given the nature of the topic uh, for victims. So help, I guess, fill me in on that. Yeah, I mean, I can just give you information about when, we, when I do the 40-hour trainings, we have... Um, People from everywhere that join these trainings, and it, it can't. It might be that their their position of, of their career is asking them to do the training, but they could mm -hmm. just be curious about domestic violence. And we get people from all over, you know, that are in these that inter, that are um, attending the trainings, and you know, just wanting to get that information. And you know, maybe some people might not use it in their in their day to day lives, but. Um, it is always good to have it and it looks really good on your resume because it, you you might think that domestic violence is just, you know, if you're working in a DV agency, but if you go, if you Google domestic violence on like um, a career or a job posting, it, it will pull a, a ton of different positions that are available if you have some sort of information and education on it. That's really interesting too. So going through the training could help you in ways you couldn't even anticipate, even if you decide no, I'm not going to use this specifically. So that's right. a great point. Mm -hmm. um, you've, I think you've really already answered this combined set of questions. And okay. to me, the answers are pretty obvious, incredibly important, and totally wonderful. But I'm going to ask them just to make sure it's okay. super clear for anybody watching. Tell us why you love your job and how it has a positive impact on the world. Um, well, I think that the position that I have now is I do a lot of prevention and education and I I know personally that that is going to give somebody either you know a topic that they hear that that's um, that is this a warning sign for them um, or that if they hear something is a trigger that they know that they can either contact um, myself or somebody in the field of domestic violence and I know that that's making an impact because before maybe they wouldn't have that that comfortability to do those, um, make those phone calls and make those, you know, text messages on our hotline or the 24 hour hotline calls. Um, I think that how I could say I love my job is because it makes me a better person. Um, everybody says like, oh, you know, you're going through a hard time, but somebody has something that's worse. It literally, somebody has, is having a worse day than I am. And it just makes me sit back and realize, you know, everybody's life is different. Everybody's going through something very different um, than what you're going through. And it just makes me humble. I mean, working with victims that are disabled has been the most humbling thing in my whole life. That I, I, it was completely eye-opening. Um, and after doing it for every in this field for like 13 years prior to, I thought I saw everything. I have not. And I still haven't seen everything. And I think that's what makes me excited about domestic violence, uh, which is a crazy thing to say. <laughs> um, 
but it makes me excited because we are working really close to the three of uh, the legislators and um, well, government, or, I'm sorry, the state to better those on domestic violence, better uh, the laws for victims, um, making sure that these are accessible to victims throughout the state, um, making sure that everyone has the ability to have our services. Um, and I think that that makes me love what I do because we are striving and being part to not only make domestic violence a little bit, um, but also to be able to support well, Audrey, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Uh, you, you're doing amazing work that makes our bigger community a much better place. And I have no doubt that you've made a real difference in the lives of countless people and continue to do that today and tomorrow. So thank you for joining us and sharing that with all of all of anybody who's watching this. Um, for those of you who are watching this, this is part of our career pathways virtual trailhead series. You can always subscribe to our Illinois P20 Network YouTube channel for more episodes and a wide, wide range of careers. Um, and check out uh, more details about these on our blog as well. If you have suggestions for someone that you think would make a great guest or a position, a career, an occupation that you would like to see us highlight, um, let us know on Twitter at P20 Network. That's P20 Network. Audrey, thanks again and thank you to everybody for watching. Thank you very much.